How's it going? So, you know, with any CNC machine, there's gonna be growing pains. Realize you hate the linear rails, upgrade the belts, blah 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 whatever. There's one thing on my plasma cutter that absolutely needs to change. Look at this trash. What an absolutely tedious and inane way to hold metal down to the bed. The bolts gotta go. I'm gonna go ahead and do what almost all of you thought I was gonna do. We need some electromagnets. So, I made these parts. This guy gets welded onto the top of that guy. And this little guy is gonna get waved. We've got these two pieces. This guy's got a hole in the end. This guy's got a tapped hole. These just screw right together. Just like that. Oh man, that is uh, wonky. I guess we can let the coils fix the wonk, huh? That might be our best bet. So, let's start winding this thing. So to get this thing wound, I cut out these little pieces on the laser. That ugh, will just fit right on there. And then this piece will get stuck on with a screw. I'll tighten it down with a wing nut and then cut that thing off. And that can just get chucked up in the drill. And we got ourselves a little, little windy boy. So, I've got a roll of enameled wire here. Got our little drill winder doodad. Now, all we gotta do is wind this puppy up. Yeah, this is gonna take some time. Now, I thought I was gonna fill this spool all the way up, but that's a lot of dang wire, man. I think I'm gonna try it as is. See if that's enough, because we're going to save a heck of a lot of wire if we can do it halfway and still get a pretty good electromagnet. This is the place where most people do math, nerds. Tighten this old boy up. We're going to hook this thing up to 12 volts. It's facing down at the bench, so hopefully it sticks to the bench. Oh, it does a little bit. Definitely not the strongest electromagnet in the world, but... Definitely an electromagnet. I don't think this little thing is strong enough. I think we're gonna have to come up with a different design. Hmm. And thus, our hero continued to make trashy electromagnets one after the other for many moons until the gods graced him with an answer. There was only one electromagnet that could be created at this size, with this material, in this atmosphere, and at the current rating of this wire. By gods, I mean math. I mean, it's pretty close, right? So this is the electromagnet that I've landed on for a couple reasons. One, it's decently strong. Uh, I kind of broke one of the wires off when I was testing it, but the, the small amount of testing that I did get to do, it's pretty strong considering the size. Two, we're kind of limited by the current rating of the wire, so we can only add so many coils. And three, the ease of manufacturing. To make this, I have a 3D printed spool that I wound the wire on and then pressed into here. And that is a heck of a lot easier than any of the other things that I was trying to do. So now we just gotta figure out how to make a whole bunch of these. Ta-da! I've actually gone ahead and improved this thing a little bit since that video. I put an actual linear bearing and a linear rail in here. Um, I did not replace the lead screw, but it does do a whole lot better than it did. The one problem now is as this shakes around, you can see it tugging and kind of kicking back. So it's not perfect, but who, who's care? Now I just got to run this thing, you know, 30 times. Well, there you have it. One buttload of coils. Now we just gotta make an equal buttload of iron cores. Got all these pieces cut and damn, that's a lot of chips. So now we gotta take these three piles and turn them into one pile. In order to install these things semi-concentrically, I cut out a couple of spacers on the laser. This fits, oh, 
No, it doesn't. That just slides onto the end of one of our uh, cores. Then we can take one of our back pieces, stick it on there, and tack it in place. And we slide that guy off. Got another piece here. This will go in the bottom end of the pipe. And then we stick our core in the middle and we can tack this side. Then we can pop our little spacer out and weld this thing up. Just like that, job done. Now, we just got a 30X of that. Now then, last but not least, we gotta press our coils into our cores. And this is gonna be tough, I think. Oh, you know what? Oh, it's going in a bit easier by hand. Yeah, that's way easier by hand. The vise cracks the PLA almost immediately. And before putting these in the Dawn pile, I'm just gonna test them. And if we're pulling around two to 300 milliamps, then we're good. So, one done. Let's assembly line this cheap. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. We've got 18 successes, and we've got a hell of a lot of failures. What the heck happened? Well, as you saw in the one shot that I did of sticking these things together, it's a really tight fit. And with the variations on the prints, because I printed these with, I think it was a 0.28 layer height, so I was going for fast, not good. Well, the tolerances did not quite fit. There was a lot of jamming and cussing and crying. But it's okay, I think I have enough magnet wire left over and I'm printing them one at a time until we can get our full 24. That's the number that I've decided on on the plasma cutter and it'll make sense why I chose that number once we start installing them on there. The good news is all of them passed the current test. So they're all under 300 milliamps, so we should be able to run them indefinitely. I mean, I know nothing lasts forever, but theoretically. So that means the coil winding machine is working great. Now, the next step for these guys, we got all our electromagnets laid out, minus a couple. They're printing, don't worry. Now in order to protect the delicate bits, the windings and the PLA in there, we're gonna cast them in resin. And I'm using a deep pour resin, and that's because this is gonna be slow moving. There's barely any surface area for bubbles to escape out of these. So for it to percolate to the bottom is gonna take a while, but this resin takes like two freaking days to set up. So. That'll be plenty of time. I'm just gonna have to keep checking in on it and topping up as it works its way down. Now the listing also said that this is uh, heat resistant resin, which I don't know, it was an Amazon listing. Who really knows? The one thing I do know is it's definitely more heat resistant than PLA. So, better than nothing. My epoxy mixing cups are um, epoxy together. Now we wait. So while we wait for those to dry, we need to figure out a way to affix them to the machine and get the electronics working. So to fix them to the machine, I got a bunch of these gas fittings, which we can just cut in half to get this little stubby, which will be welded on the machine. Then we take a nipple and we cut a length off of it, which will be welded to the back of the electromagnets. Now we take all our cut couplings and weld them to the bed of the plasma cutter. As you can see, I've lined them up over some of these holes that were cut in there. That way we can pass the wires through. And that brings us to the electronics. In a perfect world, all of these electromagnets would just be on a big ka-chunk ka-chunk switch. But this is not a perfect world. The magnetic field will mess with the arc of the plasma cutter, causing unreliable results. So, we need to be able to turn off each electromagnet when the gantry is over top of it. 
In order to do that, each electromagnet has its own relay, turning it on and off, and that relay is controlled by an Arduino. Now how does the Arduino know when to turn that relay on and off? Well that's where this gets a bit tricky. In my last video I asked for help on solving this problem and I got a huge response from so many of you guys. I just want to take a second to say thank you very much to everybody who reached out to help. I'm absolutely humbled by the response I got to that and it feels so cool to have so many smart people willing to help with my dumb problem, so thank you very much. The way we finally got this thing working is by stealing code from Archi on the Linux CNC forum. Links in the doobly-doo. This project creates a component module that is launched by Linux CNC and linked to the system. From Linux CNC, we can send our machine coordinate access data to this module via HAL pins. The module then sends that data in fixed size character packets over USB to the Arduino. Each string is prefaced with the axis label X or Y, so the Arduino looks for that label and reads the following eight characters. This is our access data. The strings are then converted to integers, because I don't really need high accuracy for this, which are checked against the coordinates for each electromagnet. When the coordinates are within a range of an electromagnet, it's turned off. We did it, man. The way I wrote the code for this is not the most efficient way in the world, but I want it to be easy to add more electromagnets in the future if I choose to. So each electromagnet has its own array, which is just the X and Y coordinate of it. After we pull the information from serial, we check that against each of the values and act accordingly. We already went over this. What I wanted to show you with this is a little life hack, if you will. If you got a lot of repetitive code to write with changing values, I'll put a stand-in for each value. That way I can just copy and paste this whole block and then I can come through and replace the stand-in for X, which is a uh, X with the value we want, and the stand-in for Y, which is Y, with the other value. It makes it a little bit quicker to do this amount of uh, tedium. Anyway, let's go check on those electromagnets. Ta-da! These have set up for quite a while now. They look pretty good. So now, let's get tedious. So, you might think that I'm a total idiot for attaching these things with hot glue. But the idea here is I want to pour epoxy in here to protect those tiny 22 gauge magnet wires. So I figured the inside of this pipe is pretty rough. And on the back of these, we've got this little butthole here from the welds that we did. So I feel like the epoxy might be enough to hold these things. So I'm just gonna get the epoxy poured and then I'll stress test them. And if it's not good enough, then I can peel back the hot glue and get a couple tacks on there. That also will protect these tiny little magnet wires from the heat of welding a little better if I have to tack them. So let's get this poured. You know, something doesn't seem quite right about this. One second. There we go. You want a Baja Blast? All right, I've thrown this other mesh on top and I've hung all the wires on it. That way they're all not like hanging off the corner or anything. They're roughly, I wouldn't say centered, but they're not angled off to one side. So while this sets up, we can go painstakingly wire the whole machine. Yay. Take a look at that beautiful box. I've stuck everything inside an irrigation box again as an homage to the original plasma cutter. This switch turns the AC on and off. And these three switches are gonna be used to isolate three different zones of electromagnets. So if I have a sheet that only covers half the bed, I can turn two of them off. Then on the inside, wow. I've opted for a bit less spaghetti than usual, seeing as this has to work for longer than one video. 
So this needs to go onto the machine, which I've also added a few wires to. As you can see, I've added wires to all the spots that we're gonna be putting an electromagnet. The grounds are broken up into three different phases, which will be hooked to those switches in the box so we can isolate different sides. Uh, otherwise, there's just one wire going all the way from up here to the electromagnet. So, you know, lots of wire, huge pain in the ass, but it's done. Now all I gotta do is take this spaghetti mess and put it in that box. Wish me luck. Look at that, you can see the wall got cleaned in a line where my uh, back roughly is. Ugh. That is everything wired up and good to go. Hopefully it's all correct. Now we can install the electromagnets. You can see that our Baja Blast set up pretty well. I'm pretty happy I did that. and It feels very strong. Like, the only force that these have to hold is the force of whatever heaviest amount of steel that it can hold. I think that it's more than sufficient to hold pieces of steel down. So, I'm just gonna go for it. Now, to install these, taking out one of the little slats, fish those wires in, and screw them in. Then we can just check that they're in plane with the rest of the slats with a straight edge. Just like that. Well, just like that times 24. Ta-da! Look at all those electromagnets. So now in order to get the coordinates into the code to get these things turning on and off in the right intervals, I'm gonna move the gantry to the middle of each electromagnet and then write down those coordinates and then I can just plug those into the code. And then that's just about it. That's that! We got all the coordinates figured out. Now we just gotta plug these numbers into the code and we can give this thing a proper test. We can go through. Stick stuff to our electromagnets here. And if everything's working correctly, well, here we go. beautifully well that's kind of it it seems like it works pretty good i won't know like how good it is until i've had it in use for a long time but i've tested it through multiple things so different ways of starting the machine different order of starting that in the machine uh leaving the machine on for a while and it seems like it continues to receive data and work which I didn't think I was going to be saying that a week ago. <laughs> I guess one last thing we can do in this video to put it to the test is do a couple big cuts. Um, I don't really want to waste my material on anything like fancy and intricate, but I do need to cut out some drawers. So yeah, I guess let's do that. pretty pleased with that. So you can see right here is that corner on that electromagnet. It looks like the resin did its job. We'll see how many cuts it'll stand up to, but I mean, I don't even really see any marring on it. This one went directly over the resin and again, I don't see anything. Before the electromagnets were on here, especially on these big long cuts, the sheet would bow out and fall off of its little, little lips that it's sitting on, so. That totally solved that problem. And it's just a nice bonus that the pieces stay where they are when they're cut out. Now obviously it's not gonna happen on little, little pieces, but those were never really a problem. So yeah, freaking stoked, man. Job freaking done, y'all. That was definitely a bit of a nightmare and definitely a stretch of my programming skills for, um, let's be honest, such a simple, application. Either way, I'm pretty stoked about it, man. So yeah, that's what I got for you this time.
you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.